Great. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be able to share with you. I am greeting you from far away, from the center of Europe, from Prague in the Czech Republic. And I am happy that I can share with you. I hope this uh, webinar can be also recorded so that you can, you can see it uh, later if you are not able to be present. Uh, it's at the moment with us, and I hope it will uh, be an inspiration for you. Uh, I am trying to include in my coaching and mentoring uh, also experiential methods so that the clients not only think and not only have uh, received their solutions from a rational mind, but uh, so that they can also experience something new, something from a different angle to receive inspiration from some experiential exercises. And I wish to share with you 29 of them, uh, which uh, seems seem to be very efficient. Uh, they lead to great uh, 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 changes in people's thinking, changes in people's lives, changes in people's businesses, because the, the, thanks to these experiential methods, they are able to come to new ideas, new uh, new experiences, and uh, new ways of looking at things, and so on. So I will be sharing these uh, methods with you. I hope I will be clear enough and simple enough so that you could understand. And if not, if something is not clear, please just don't hesitate to ask. During the meeting, write down your question to chat or uh, let me know in some way uh, how to, uh, how I can uh, explain something better if not understood properly. Okay. So this is my presentation and uh, we will be talking about most efficient creative experiential methods uh, which we can use in coaching and also in mentoring. Sometimes we uh, can give people some advice, but sometimes our advice is not good enough because it does not fit to their lifestyle, to their way of thinking, to their personalities, and they need to find out for themselves some better method, some better solution. And here we have these experiential methods, which can help those people to find their own answers, find their own solutions, not only by thinking, but by experiencing. Uh, so my colleague Icy uh, shared some basic information about myself. Uh, the last sentence here means that uh, I am a proud owner of two shepherd dogs. And they pull us with my wife on a scooter. So if you will visit sometime Czech Republic and Prague, you can meet us in the forests of Prague, uh, being pulled by two dogs on a scooter. So you will recognize me. So please come to me and uh, tell me that we know each other already from this webinar. So welcome. And you are invited to Prague. So this is our shepherd dog, and this is my scooter. Great. Uh, so this is the contents of our webinar, of my sharing of know-how. And uh, I wish to show you the uh, 29, I selected 29 creative experiential methods, uh, which we can use in coaching and mentoring. And they are taken for, from wide spectrum of psychological schools. And uh, these methods I have seen, uh, they had uh, biggest impact on clients in solving their problems or in finding new solutions for in their situations. And also they were powerful in starting their development. Let's go to these 29 methods. Uh, maybe you know uh, projective picture symbols. Uh, you can see here uh, in uh, Europe, maybe it's, uh, I think it's available also in China, uh, there is a game for children. Uh, it is called Dixit. It is a card game. And I have found that 
if you uh, take five different sets or four basic sets of Dixit game, you will have more than 260 cards with these picture symbols. And I can see, I could experience that uh, when we are using these picture cards with symbols, with clients, it is it greatly opens their mind for new approaches and uh, new understanding of their situation. So this is uh, this picture is an example of one client who was talking about uh, difficulties he has in his life, how he is grilled in this uh, mill, how many uh, many tasks he has like these uh, uh, like these. Uh, uh, post it on this body of the man. And he was talking about his problems and about his situation in life using these people. And it opens the creative part of mind. When we are not only talking from head rationally, but when we are using pictures uh, for uh, the client to understand his situation better. So I usually show these 260 pictures. I lay them, lay them on the table. And I tell the client, please select several pictures which correspond to the situation you are in right now. And then select another of pictures which would uh, show how you would like the situation to be. So the, the desired state. And he talks about the present state and he talks about the desired state uh, using the picture. And it is very interesting how uh, uh, how interesting this way of work is for the clients and it opens their uh, feelings much more. They feel more open. Uh, they can realize something by looking at pictures and uh, usually they come with, uh, they uh, get richer understanding of the situation and better description of their future desired situation by using the picture. And uh, uh, so this is one of the one of the experiential methods because they can they usually tell you more than they would tell uh, if only being in their head uh, because they feel I am not I'm talking about the picture so I am more free uh, than when I would control myself when talking about myself just from the Russian mind this is one of the methods I'm. I'm sure some of you use it and you can, I recommend uh, this method to use. Uh, we even use this in Czech uh, prisons. Uh, I, uh, I gave this method to the people working with prisoners in prison and they use the picture cards uh, when they meet with uh, groups of prisoners and they want them to be more you know, sensitive towards the crime that they made towards the victims of their crimes. And so they share their feelings and their lives based on the pictures. And these pres these uh, officials from the prison prison told me that uh, the prisoners were much more open. It created much better atmosphere in the group also when they shared with each other their lives using the picture. So it can be also very well used in the group work. I'm sure you also know the second method, uh, which is drawing the mind map, uh, doing some sketch noting. Uh, sometimes it's called graphic facilitation or doodling. Uh, and I found that many people, uh, many people uh, feel better uh, than when only then not only talking, but making simple pictures or simple diagrams, simple mind maps, and they can think about their situation, what they need, where they are, what they would like, what are the plans they need to do. Uh, and it's much better for many people to draw the mind map or uh, make some, some notes in this graphic facilitation, this middle picture, and uh, they, it, uh, it opens their creativity much more than when they would be on it on. And very popular thing, I'm also sure you know that, are vision boards. That people very often are thinking about some goals for the next year. What is the vision for their company? What is the vision for their own life? 
what they what are their wishes for the next year and so on and very popular method is making the vision board uh, try to think about how i want my life to be my work to be my results to achieve and when they make it such a, a picture board uh, and a visualization of of their goals uh, they feel much more connected with these goals and it helps them to achieve them uh, one of the one of the uh, benefits is that they can uh, look at this vision board from time to time during the whole year and maybe during the whole of your life and you can make the whole lifelong vision or just vision for the next project and it helps not only individuals but also the teams if the teams do together such a vision board uh, as a team it also connects the team uh, uh, one of the methods we can use yeah, magnetic is really often used by people also here in China. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you know that. Uh, uh, in coaching, we very often work with scale. We ask the client uh, on the on the scale from zero to ten, where are you in your situation right now? And the person says, I am on the point four. Uh, then we ask the client, okay, uh, why this is not zero? What you have there already on that? or uh, uh, level of the scale and they explain what they have, what is functioning already for them. And then uh, you ask, okay, and uh, where do you want to go? What is the shift you want to make from this point four, where you would like to see yourself within three months, for example. And then the person says, oh, I want to see myself at the point six. Okay, how the six will look like? What will be different there? So you, you all know this very simple method the simplest possible coaching method but what is uh, uh, what is much more powerful is the person not only talks about the scale but he can for example draw the line of life and uh, put the important uh, situations and uh, experiences in his life where he is now where the year is up or down how he wants his future to be developing and for many people, this drawing this line of life is much better than just using the scale. And what is even more powerful is doing the work with the scale in the space, maybe even in the nature. So we can go with the client somewhere outside and tell him, okay, if here, for example, you will stand here in this, uh, in this part of the garden, this is zero. Here, uh, and at the another part of the garden, here is number 10. And now go to the place physically where you are right now. And he's not only talking about I am on the point four right now, but he's standing uh, in the space between zero and 10. And we can ask him, well, what are your feelings? How it is here? Uh, uh, and the uh, great benefit is that people, again, are not only in, in their heads, but they include their body uh, feelings, their feelings, and it's much more powerful uh, tool for them than just talking about it. So this is one of my recommendations for you. If you are experienced uh, in working with scale, uh, do it in an experiential way. That means make it in the space, make it in the room, uh, and let the person move from one point to the other, uh, try to do several steps back. How is, it, how is it feeling there? Try to make several steps forward, what is different there? And very often people get new inspiration and new insights just by moving physically in the room or in the, in the country. And what is also nice, if there is uh, some uh, uh, stones, rocks, trees, uh, hills, and people can, uh, you know, uh, uh, look at their life as, for example, and here is some pit, and here is some hill, and here is some rock, and my number 10 is on the top of the rock. And they climb the rock, stop, stand up there, and feel how it is to be on the point 10 in their life. And it's uh, for many people, uh, this nature is very helping 
uh, to experience the differences between different situations in their lives. Okay, Mila, here is a question about the line of life. Uh, is there an online space to join the line of life for people to join online? Because when people meet, like meet on Zoom, and how to coach the client using this tool? Yeah, yeah. I must say that I'm uh, I'm doing uh, uh, coaching trainings uh, for many groups uh, already ninety now, uh, maybe uh, one year long trainings. And one of those trainings during COVID time, I had to do completely online. And I was wondering whether all these methods and tools can be used also online. And I was surprised that all of them could be used. So for example, when we draw the line of life, we can share some uh, whiteboard and draw it on the whiteboard. We can, we can share some program in computer which allows people to draw pictures. So we can draw the mind maps, for example. When uh, we want to, to work with the, with the uh, scale in space, I can put the camera a bit far away. And I, I can ask the client, please stand in your room on the level zero here. Now move to the place where you are right now, here. OK, now move a bit forward. How is it feeling there? And uh, all these methods can be done also uh, in a distance cooperation with the client uh, just by this simple way. And of course, there is a lot of uh, programs for gr group facilitation. If you are working with groups, for example, you can use Mural or Miro as the tool for drawing pictures, making notes, cooperation, the team. So I, I was surprised that even these experiential methods uh, were very functional also in the online uh, space. Of course, it's always better if you can meet people personally, but I did not see um, any big uh, problems uh, people were able to experience and feel even in this way. One, uh, number four, uh, we call it here Chinese table of balance and harmony. I don't really know whether the, this method is taken from China, but uh, we we here in Europe we feel, we think that yes, and um, uh, we are doing it in in space as well, and uh, we uh, ask the client to stand in the middle of the room, and we ask him well, just imagine there are four different qualities in your life: health, love, abundance, and self realization. And now it's very similar to the scale in space. And, but we, here we have four scales or axis. And we ask the person, now imagine that this line in front of you is the line of your head. And now make some steps from zero to 10 to feel how much satisfied are you with the quality and level of health in your own life. The person goes on this line and feels, okay, I feel that right now in my life, I feel I'm here. I am quite healthy. I am doing some physical exercises. I am, uh, I do not have big problems, but I could, I feel I could move more. I could make more sports. I could uh, eat uh, healthier food. So I would like to move from this position where I am right now, one step forward. Okay, how it is here? What is different here? Okay, here I'm running, I'm exercising, I'm eating healthy food and I feel much better. Great. So we, we explored your uh, line of health. Now let's, let's look at, the, at love. How satisfied are with the level of love you know, and do it not from the, your head, do it experience. Okay, how how much love do I have in my life? I'm loving myself, I'm loving my partner, I have a, a, good, a lot of good friends, so I'm quite satisfied with love. But maybe I could move even more. And the same with abundance, not only material abundance, but also um, how I feel that I have, I am rich, not only concerning the money, but rich in experiences, rich in um, uh, different uh, 
uh, qualities of life, so how much I feel abundance. And the last axis is self-realization, how I feel self-realized in my life, where I am right now, how I feel there, and do I want to make some movements forward. So we call this Chinese state of balance and harmony. And uh, when the client feels, okay, I, my health, love, and abundance is quite good, I do not need to make some changes and improvements in this area, but I need to work on my self-realization. Okay, then we have the coaching or mentoring theme, which was generated by this experiential method. Very simple, but very powerful, I must say. Uh, do you know this method in China? Because we call it here Chinese uh, table of balance and these four qualities. Yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, but actually, few uh, few coaches, coach, co coaches or mentors can uh, use this. Such as the second picture is yin and yang in Chinese. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So uh, thank you, uh, thank you to China for this method which we could use, uh, which we can use from your repertoire, and of course uh, you've got your five elements which is a bit different from, from uh, uh, Europe. We here use uh, four elements mainly. And uh, these four elements uh, uh, like fire, air, water, and uh, earth uh, are the metaphors and symbols both for the personal qualities, for the personality. Uh, we talk about uh, somebody who is more fire personality, someone has more uh, air that is more free, sometimes is more uh, feeling oriented or emotional person, he's more water. So we use these four elements as uh, one of the tools for the personality uh, diagnostics, but also uh, sometimes in coaching, we use uh, four elements touches. Uh, that means, for example, somebody needs to be supported. He feels, I need support. I'm, I so, I lack, I lack somebody who would really support me. I lack support in my own personality. I need to feel supported. And sometimes, uh, if it is uh, culturally possible, we can offer the person, okay, so I will stand here now with my hands like this and you just lean on me and feel this. And this is a very powerful ex experience for many people that they don't need to be only standing in their own strengths, but they have something what is, what is supporting them. In the reality, it is me who is supporting them, but I ask them, okay, so if you feel this support now, what this support means for you in your own life. What are your resources? What do you have behind you? What is uh, holding you? What are the resources you can use in your life? And so is, this is, for example, uh, for example, the air touch is that I am, I can, it is just an experiment. And I can do this in front of the face of the other person. He will close his eyes and he can feel this air, this fresh air, which is, you know, uh, touching me. And it is so refreshing. It's so such small exper experience, you know, but I can feel, oh, it's refreshing. I can relax now. I am so busy at work. I'm so uh, hard working. And now I can feel this touch of the air on my face and I can feel relaxed and I can, I can breathe in and Maybe uh, by the way, breathing is also one of the one of the air, air touches. We can teach the client how he can breathe deeper, how he can go to the walk to the air to the to the park. This is the air touch. How he can feel the ground under his feet. This is again the air touch, and how this these elements can give us support in our life. It is symbolical, but it is also practical. Uh, we even uh, discuss with clients the psycho hygiene techniques. For example, uh, you can find maybe at least fifteen different ways. Different ways how each of these in Western tradition four elements, uh, how we can use them for uh, restarting our energy, for refreshing our batteries, psychical uh, regeneration. 
for example, I can watch into the fire, I can lit the candle, I can make a meal on the fire, I can go swimming, I can take shower, I can take energy from water, I can breathe more, I can drink water, I can uh, I can lie on the ground, feel the heaviness of my body, I can, uh, I don't know, uh, take food, which is element earth, and so on. So this is uh, something, the symbolic of four elements we are using here a lot, uh, not only for personality diagnostics, personality uh, differences, but also for psychohygiene, uh, that we teach our clients to use these uh, elements which are free of charge or recharging our batteries. And also sometimes we can use or I mean, touches like certain form of, let's say, uh, massage, the simple massage, for example, water can be done like this on the, on the head. And uh, it is a beautiful feeling how uh, it refreshes me when I imagine, you know, the water falling down on my, on my hand, on my head, and I can feel refreshed. Of course, not everybody from you is working with clients in person. Uh, not everybody uh, is not always, it is culturally acceptable to touch the other person. But uh, I've got a lot of coaches here who just combine coaching with some form of massage or physiotherapy and there they can use also these four element touches which are different. Um, for example, oh, uh, let, uh, let's stop here. I could talk a lot about it. Imagination, <clears throat> relaxation, and active imagination. Uh, with many cl clients, we not only uh, talk from uh, the rational mind with them, but uh, we also do some small imagination techniques. So, for example, let's imagine how it will look like in the future when you will achieve this goal. And the person just closes his eyes, closes his eyes, and uh, uh, describes the picture, how its life will, will look like. Sometimes we start, okay, if you are stressed, just imagine that you are on some beautiful place, maybe on the beach, maybe in the mountains, and just see the picture in, in front of your inner, inner eyes. And make the picture as vivid as, and as live as possible. And feel the air, feel the air, feel the feel the atmosphere, see the sea, see the trees, listen to the birds singing, and the person can create his own imagination, and he can be very much refreshed and renewed just by imagining. And so, uh, in many situations, I don't know how it is in China, but I believe you also are working very hard, and people are very stressed and and uh, overwhelmed, and uh, they are endangered by the burned out syndrome and so on. And so, very often, clients come with this need: I need to relax more. I need to uh, to breathe uh, breathe freely. I need to learn some. Uh, relaxation techniques and in that case we use imagination as one of the tools and also uh, Carl Gustav Jung uh, the picture here uh, uh, recommended his method of active imagination that I create the inner picture maybe of the nice place which I will visit and then I let my mind to create the next pictures and even the story even the movie and my subconscious mind will create some uh, some story. The picture will develop. I will maybe meet somebody there in my imagination. I maybe will ask him the important question, and I maybe will even receive the answer. So this is the work with uh, collective unconscious uh, mind, which uh, uh, Carol Gustav Jung, as a psychologist, uh, offered uh, the science um scientific community this uh concept of collective collective uh, unconscious and he taught us how we could can use active imagination to be in contact with our unconscious part of the psyche and how we can 
uh, go there for some uh, inspiration, for some insights, maybe for um, for uh, some inner dialogue where we can ask the questions, our inner self, and sometimes we can even receive uh, unexpected answer. So this is another method which we use from psychology, from Carl Gustaf in psychology. Yeah, yeah, for this one, actually, yeah. It's a common state that people here in China often get stressed and burned out. Yeah, because due to the poor economic environment this year, and people are feeling more stressed than actually ever. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's just, really for it's, them to spend time to relax and imagine about it for a beautiful future. Yeah. 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 It's the same here in Europe. We are uh, working very hard and we are stressed in many areas of our lives. And that's why we include these relaxation techniques in the coaching and mentoring process. Some coaches and mentors even begin their sessions with clients by small meditations, small relaxations, small mindfulness exercise, just to uh, concentrate on your body, how you are feeling in your body, how you are breathing. Uh, uh, if you feel some un uncomfort in your body, just move, make some small movements just uh, uh, concentrate on observing your thoughts don't uh, be your thoughts don't become your thoughts but observe them from certain distance uh, concentrate on how you are feeling right now you know emotions and so some coaches even begin their sessions with clients by this small mindfulness exercise or mindfulness uh, meditation Another tool uh, we are using is coaching uh, without words. Uh, so, for example, uh, we ask the client, uh, make a sculpture out of your body uh, showing how you are feeling right now. Maybe the person is stressed and he will show, oh, I'm feeling like this. And this is the sculpture, you know, he makes from his own body. And we let him be in this in this position for a few moments. And we ask him, okay, how is it? How is it in this body position? How are you stressed and heavy head and ah, depressed? Okay, and the coach is doing the same, and he says, okay, if I do this, I also feel some pain in my back here. Oh, it's unpleasant position. Then we ask the client, okay, now sculpture. Uh, maybe this was the past, the best bad situation was. Maybe then he can show the sculpture of the present. State. And also, he can we can then, then ask him, okay, so show me if you are stressed right now, find some bodily position when you are relaxed. You know? And the person is like this. And I ask him, okay, how are you feeling now? Oh, I feel so relaxed, so relieved. And the coach is doing the same, he's mirroring the client. And also feels his own body and he says, yes, I'm feeling well. And then the third part of this exercise is that the coach can offer the position of the body position, I mean, which is even more relaxed for him. So coach, for example, will do this, will put his legs on the table and oh, this is even my problem. The client copies mirrors right now me as a coach, he do he does the same, and he says, "Oh, it's feeling even better, but it's too much for me." I will then ask him, "Okay, so then find the final position which is that best for you," and he will find maybe this bodily position, not with hands like this, but not like this, lying on on his on his. I ask him, "Okay, so how are you feeling right now?" Oh, I feel so relaxed. Not so stressed as I was at the, at the beginning of this meeting. It's wonderful. Just by changing my bodily posture, I'm feeling better. It's wonderful. So whenever I will feel stress, I will I will sit down in this relaxed position, and it will immediately bring me more relaxed. So this is coaching without words. That the person just with his bodily postures uh, feels the bad situation feels the better situation. And he can even, we call it anchoring resources. It's from neuro-linguistic programming. But when you find new feelings, you 
anchor them. You know, so you say some sentence to you, maybe I feel relaxed now. You will do some bodily expression, some bodily gesture maybe, in case just sitting in this way. And we also are feeling differently in that moment. So whenever I put myself in this relaxed position, I start feeling better. And I say to myself this healing sentence, I am relaxed now. And it's interesting how powerful this very simple method is for many clients. Great. So um, it is also part of the bodywork. Uh, there are different psychological and psychotherapical schools which are working with body, like bioenergetics, biosynthesis, avoidant therapy. And uh, of course, we are not therapists, but we can take from these uh, methods some tools. And some of them is this one, sculpting the bad situation, sculpting the desired state in the future, coaches, alternative proposal of the bodily position, final client's choice of this uh, final position and anchoring of resources so that whenever he needs it, he can uh, come back to, the, to this feeling. And it is not used only in uh, uh, when the person is solving stress. Uh, basically, it can be any situation in life which can be sculpted like this. And you can find the bodily posture, the healing sentence, and the certain feeling which he can, any time in his life he will need it, he can call it back to him just by this uh, bodily, uh, mental, and emotional anger. Here's a question. Can you say some healing sentences? You just mentioned the healing sentence. Yes. For example, uh, yesterday I had a client and she was solving uh, uh, her psychical problem that in many situations in her life, she's feeling not enough, that she's not, not good enough. And uh, she says, I have it from my childhood. It destroys my self-value. Uh, I'm always stressed that I'm not good enough. I'm uh, underestimating myself. I'm just not good enough. And we were trying to find uh, the sentence which would make her relax. Some uh, change this sentence which make her uh, trying to be better, 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 make, uh, have a big, better performance and so on, but it is never achieved. She is never here. And we were trying to find what would be the healing sentence she could say to herself, which would give her which would give her freedom. And we finally, after some process, uh, she was, um, we used the method, which I do not have here, I think, or maybe yes, yes, I have it later. We used method of uh, externalization that we took this, uh, this voice uh, that told her, you are not enough. We put this voice on another chair and we talked to this, uh, with this voice. And I, as a coach, played this voice, which is telling her all her life, you are not enough. I will be here with you until the end of your life. You will never be enough. I, and she asked me, why are you living with me? And I told her, because you are calling me. You cannot live without me. And this was the conversation we had. And I was playing this inner voice. And then... She said, okay, so I don't want this voice to be controlling my life. So I will write down uh, the contract. I'm finishing my contract. You are fired. And she sent this uh, voice away from her life. And I told her, great. But now you are empty. We need to exchange this old voice for some new one. So what will be the healing sentence you will say to yourself, which will... Uh, make you, um, which will be op completely opposite from this voice, you are not enough. He said, I am enough. I said, how is it, how does it feel? And she said, I don't believe it. And I'm, it, it, it is not a good sentence because whenever I hear enough, we feel again that I am not enough. We said, okay, so we need to change the sentence. So try to say just I am. I am. How is it to say I am? 
yes, it's I, uh, yeah. oh yeah, it's without this uh, this uh, 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 ask or this um, push to be to be better than. And I said, okay, continue with the sentence. I am what I am. How does it feel? I am the way I am. And it's like, it's great. It's much better. It's healing sentence. I am what I am. And I said, okay, please, now let's add another word, which will be the complete different, complete in a complete opposite from not enough. And we were searching for this word for a, for a few moments. And finally she said, I am the way I am. And uh, now, I, and now I can feel I cannot express it in English because in Czech we've got different word, but in English it says, and that's okay. It's enough, you know, and that's okay. And that word, um, that's okay, uh, released her, you know. So this is this was the example of the of the healing sentence. And many times we are working with clients trying to find the new way they can think the way they can talk to themselves trying to find healing sentences i've got even such a list of 75 healing sentences from the coaching sessions which i have write down uh, what was the most uh, what was used most by clients and what was most powerful for them uh, when we are talking about sculpting uh, uh, virginia satir uh, is the one of the psychotherapists who worked a lot with the uh, with the method of sculpting, uh, just I explained before. And you can even use this method when you are working with groups. You can make for, make for example from the members of the team the sculpture of their team, sculpture and uh, of their management of the company of the clients, and you can make a you know picture from bodies of the people, of the members of the team, or if, for example, sometimes we have coaching where we have some uh, reflection team, some other therapists who participate in the coaching session, or some other coaches, or maybe some students who can learn coaching. So sometimes we are not alone with the client, and we can use these other people uh, also for this, for creating the, creating the sculpture. Uh, and uh, of, for example, this is me, this is problem and this is solution. And we are working with these uh, experiments. In, and if we do not have more people, uh, we just ask the client to play all the roles. I am now in the role of my boss and he's standing like this over me. I am now playing myself, uh, showing myself and I feel and I'm just under him. And I need some change. I need to stand next to him on the same level. And again, he can experience both people, both positions. So this is some of the experimental exercises. Uh, probably the most uh, used one, uh, the very the most frequently used one is Gestalt experiment. Uh, I personally studied uh, Gestalt uh, psychotherapy for five years, and I still, I took from this uh, psychotherapy school just one very simple method, which is very powerful in many cases. I'm teaching it all, even to the students at uh, the university, and they uh, just learn this one method. And if they use it in 97% of cases, it uh, brings some change uh, to the coaching or mentoring process for their clients. So this is the method of... Uh, on two chairs or several chairs. And for example, the person is sitting here. I am now feeling like this. I am not happy at my work. I need some change. Okay, imagine that the chair happened. Go to sit on the next chair and feel the difference. What is different here? It is a very simple method you, because you could sit on one chair and talk, uh, now I feel like this, and in the future I want to feel like this. But when you do this physically, mm -hmm. just really changing the place you are sitting, it is much more powerful for people because they can feel the difference. They say, oh, it's interesting. I'm feeling differently here. Okay, how am I feeling here? What is different here? What have, what have you done that you were able to get to this? And for them, it's much more real, much more experiential. 
And on these chairs, we can put not only present state and future state, but we can, for example, uh, put here somebody I need to solve some problem with, and I can have a dialogue with that person. I can have a dialogue with within my own personality. For example, this is my uh, my um, this is uh, the part of my personality that I where I feel I'm not enough. And here, I feel I am enough. And these two parts of my personality can talk together, or I, as a coach, can talk to both of them and to ask them, okay, how is it here? How is it here? Where is the difference? So it's very simple method, but very powerful, and we can use it for almost any themes people are thinking about. For example, very often we use it when somebody wants to prepare for some important meeting, and he says, okay, I need to go to my boss and ask him for uh, to increase my salary a bit. And we say, okay, so... Imagine your boss is sitting in front of you and now tell him that you want more money. And the person says, oh, good boss, I, 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 I think I'm working many years here, so please, can you give me, can you increase my salary? Okay. Then I, as a coach, ask the person, okay, how are you feeling when you said this? What did you say? How was your bodily position? And now go to see yourself from the, from the view of your boss. How is it uh, appealing to your boss? What he, what he, what he see at you? Oh, he can see that I am really not self-assured. Okay, so let's try another way of telling the boss for uh, to increase your salary. So try another way, and we can experiment maybe four or five different ways. And uh, very often, I in this exercise, I very often ask them to, to try the extremes. So for example, try the extreme that you are completely, you know, humble and you are shy, shy and you, uh, you, 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 and try also the, uh, another, um, another uh, opposite uh, position that you are very arrogant. Try both because it will increase your, you know, uh, potential uh, ways how to communicate with people. And finally, I ask him, okay, you tested several ways. Now show the way which is most appropriate for you. And he will find probably some something in, in between. And he, uh, we were able to train with him uh, the new way of communication, the new way of feeling, and it helps people a lot experiment and we can use a gestalt experiment on several chairs example, for training these new approaches or training the presentation I will have in the management meeting and in many other situations. We were talking already about uh, anchoring inner resources. Uh, very often in the coaching session uh, the person finds some new new way of looking at things and he will change his mind. He will find new approach and he will say, oh, it's wonderful. I have found now, I have some uh, new approach I, I want to have in my life. And right now I am feeling differently. I found solution. I now believe I will make it. And when such a situation happens, and it happens in many coaching uh, sessions, that the person finds the new approach, new standpoint, new feeling. He believes in himself or herself, uh, herself much more. So we need somehow to help him to keep this position, keep his standpoint, being able to use it anytime in, the, in that situation we will use anchoring resources. So I will ask him, okay, when you find, found this new approach, uh, how does it feel? Oh, I feel relaxed, refreshed. I feel uh, renewed. I feel that I am powerful. I have got strength. I, am, I have enough power to achieve my goals. Great. 
uh, what bodily gesture should uh, sh- should uh, help you to get back to this feeling whenever you will need? Okay, maybe this one. Great. And what will be the sentence you will tell to yourself? You are able. Yes. We do this three times so that uh, it fixes into the client's uh, into the client's um, body. And feelings and into his mind and we tell him whenever you will need to get back to this end to this uh, attitude just use this anchor say this sentence make this body gesture feel that new feeling and sometimes it's enough when the person does does it once just in the coaching session or mentoring session Uh, and sometimes it's necessary for him to try this several times in the real life before it really comes uh, powerful enough so that he can uh, and this uh, he can implant this new attitude to his everyday life whenever when he or she we were talking about anchoring already before here we have this externalization I was mentioning already before the so sometimes when the person is talking about some problem I am uh, I am. Uh, I I have a fear. Uh, maybe I have some. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe fear is a good example. And we take the fear out of the person, put it on the chair. Maybe in that gestalt experiment ex- uh, exercise, and we are able to talk to the problem. Why are you here? Uh, what is strengthening? What makes you more strong? What makes you weaker? what uh, this person needs to do to get rid of you. And I can play the fear or I I can ask the client to go to sit in the position of of his fear and I will be asking him a question and he will answer. And so this externalization is a great tool because the person, we already, we usually think about the problem that it is part of us. We cannot get rid of it because it's part of our personality. And this externalization method uh, helps us to see that the problem can be seen in front of us and can be much better treated and we can much better understand how to how to uh, what to do with it. Just today I am right now in the coaching training which I'm leading and uh, in the morning we had some coaching session here where the client was talking about uh, the feeling of guilt. We put the feeling of guilt on another chair and we talked to the feeling of guilt. And when she talked to this guilt, she realized because she wanted to um, have some have some space for her creative work at home and she was feeling guilty that she's not taking care of children and of her husband. She was feeling guilt. And When she was seeing the guilt in front of her, she understood, okay, I can do with it something. And she said, and she said, this guilt will not ruin my life. I will keep the boundaries. And she showed this gesture with her hands. I will will keep my boundaries. This is the creative space for myself. And one half a day in a week, I will not take care of children. I will not cook. I will not take care of the husband but I will do my creative work for myself. It was excellent. And then we and we talked about the experience and she said, it was great when I could see this guilt outside of me, I could see it in front of me. It was much easier for me to find out how I should approach this, how I should uh, behave. And at the same time, she was making naturally this anchor. She had her bodily, uh, gesture, she had the feeling of freedom and she had her sentence. Uh, this is my creative space and it is only for me. Whenever whenever she will uh, go to her room and to, whenever she will, wants to have her creative space and create some creative product, she will begin this half a day saying this sentence, making this gesture, not feeling guilty. So this was an example of externalization together with anchoring resource. 
Uh, very often uh, in our coaching or mentoring sessions, uh, we come to the place where the person needs to do some small ritual. For example, saying goodbye to something. In this case, it was saying goodbye to the feeling of guilt. Maybe saying goodbye to some bad habit. Maybe saying goodbye to the bad job I want to leave. Maybe saying goodbye to the bad people I do not want to have in my life anymore. So we help them uh, to invent and make very small, simple ritual. Okay, so imagine uh, this anger is here in front of you and say goodbye to, to your anger. Yes, anger, you were here for many years with me. Uh, now I'm uh, sending you away. I am saying goodbye to you and I am not angry anymore. Or letting go of something or inviting something new to, to my life. So I can say, oh, I invite joy again back to my life. Uh, or forgiving somebody. Uh, you treated me wrong, my colleague at work, for example, and it was not pleasant. I was hurt, but I will not, I will not keep this hurt anymore. It was your attack. I leave it upon you. I will not carry it anymore. And I'm forgiving you. I will not think about it anymore. I will not feel something bad against you. I'm just forgiving you. Uh, and these small rituals have got, are very powerful people. And uh, very often we finish the coaching session with such a ritual, which summarizes maybe something what the person wants to do, what he wants to get rid of, what he wants to have new in his life. We are using these rituals, which are usually also, uh, uh, which are usually um, uh, consist, which usually consist of saying something, taking it seriously, feeling the uh, result of this sentence, which I have said, and maybe even uh, feeling the difference in the body. Sometimes they need uh, some ritual, they need to strengthen the ritual. I, for example, uh, uh, throwing it into the, throwing it into the fire. So for example, they write down, this is something what I do not want to have anymore in my life. So they write down the things they do not want to have anymore in their lives and they make a fire. And in a ritual way, they put it in fire and they feel that it strengthens their coaching experience. And so I'm using these forms of rituals very often. And uh, I always ask the person, what kind of a ritual would be good for you? Do you want to uh, ban it in a fire? Do you want to send it on, uh, on the water, on the stream of the river to, fl to flow away? Or do you want to, I don't know, uh, uh, throw it into the dustbin and so on. Uh, what we do also is mini constellation. Uh, constellation is a systemic way how to uh, demonstrate some system of the client and the system can be uh, my colleagues at work, my family, or even my own inner uh, feelings and so on. So we create the constellation that means, for example, very simple constellation is when uh, the person sits in the center or stands in the center of the room and I ask him, okay, so put a piece of paper uh, to where is your past and put a piece of paper on the ground which will, uh, which will symbolize or uh, which will materialize your future and put these two papers on the ground and he stands somewhere in, mid in the middle. So I tell him, uh, stand somewhere between your future and your past, where you are right now. And look at your past and feel whether your, uh, how is your past, whether your past has uh, some, uh, whether it is supporting or whether it is endangering, 
whether you can turn back to, uh, to your past and say thank you, or whether you can turn to your past and say, I'm glad I do not need to be there anymore because it was a difficult past, but thank you what I have I could learn from you. And then I can look to the future and say, please uh, let me get to you. Uh, and uh, so the person can feel how he is feeling in the middle of his life between his past and future. Then he can go to stand on the place of his, of his own past, stands there, looks at uh, the place where he was standing before, and I ask him, okay, so no, now you are standing at the place of your past. Do you have some message to, to, to yourself from the position of your past? Forget me, I will be always here for you, anything. Uh, do you want to advise him something? Just go forward, great. Then he can go to sit on the position of his own future, and he can go there and stay there, stand there for a moment and feel, oh, I'm feeling, you know, it's such a freedom here. It's a wonderful future, great. I want to get here. Okay, and from the position of your future, do you have a message you want to say to, the, to, to yourself from the position of your own future? Yes, go forward. Don't be afraid. You can get here. Cheers. <laughs> so this is a very simple mini constellation. Constellation means, uh, you know, like a constellation of the stars, some positions, some places. Uh, and here we do not have stars. We have past, present, and future. And the person can exper ex experience all three, all three uh, positions. In the same way, of course, I can have a constellation which which is uh, where there is not this abstract things like future and past, but I can have people there. I can make a situation, I can describe the situation in my family, in my team, in my company, and I can go to stand on the positions of different people in the family or in the company, feel how they feel, and maybe get some inspiration what to do, how to solve the situation. Maybe you also know the uh, systemic constellations which are doing in groups that people uh, just play the roles of uh, of the, the members of the family or members of the company of the client. But it is another uh, use of this method which requires more people to be present. Thank you, Milan. Maybe, maybe I share some comments from the audience. Yeah. Because uh, according to their feedback, was is your share is very inspiring, because such as today's people can because people feel more stressed than before and they can have more negative emotions, just like uh, the anger, sadness. Yeah, also they can feel being humble that they are not self confident enough. But and you shared some uh, tools. And they can find new ways to know that they can externalize those feelings and thoughts and have conversation with them. It's amazing. Yeah, put them, uh, you no, know, just now that you're the method of exper experiential, the gestalt, the on chairs. Yeah, it, it's very amazing because when yeah, yeah. you you sit chair and you put those emotions, feelings, put an, a, on another chair and you have the conversations personalized and you can also uh, say goodbye to anger, to uh, other feelings like uh, sorrow, being sad. Yep, just like this uh, small, just like you said, small rituals, yes, the small actions, they can make difference to our emotions and even our body, the body feeling, which is so important. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, appreciation. Uh, yeah, these are very powerful tools and very simple ones. And of course, uh, when you want to offer this to your client, you need to be self-assured that uh, you are able to use the method. And you need to uh, not to be afraid uh, to offer the method to the client. And you need to uh, put a, make a good design. 
so that it really is appropriate for the situation of the client. And you need to make a contract with clients. So I mean, you can tell, um, I've got such an idea. We could make such a small experiment, if you agree, uh, that maybe we could we could uh, we could put this fear on this chair and we could look at it and see whether it will bring us some benefit. And if you do it like this, the person does not feel shy, does not feel bad, does not feel, oh, no, no, some, it's something to big. I'm afraid, no, if you uh, make a good design and if you explain the client very shortly uh, what we can do, and if you don't do it as a, we now will do this, but I have such an idea, I have such an offer for you, if you like, we can try this, such an experiment. Are you, are you in favor? And usually people say yes. Why not? If it's a small experiment, and then it's very, very natural and very. And I must say, I'm teaching these methods to the students of my uh, teaching uh, of my coaching trainings, and they use it with their clients, and they use it even with even if they are very new in coaching or mentoring profession, they use it very, very, very soon, and uh, I, then they come with the video recordings, they show me how they use the ritual or mini constellation or experiment in chairs or some relaxation technique. And uh, I am always surprised how powerful it is, even if the coach or mentor is not too much experience, is new in the profession, but he is able to do this. And for the clients in, in a majority of cases, it is uh, they. It brings them a great value. Yeah. Thank you. One of the uh, one of the exercises I'm doing with my clients is a form of the mindfulness exercise. Uh, if the person exactly uh, as you said, if the person is feeling stressed and so on, so I teach them some small mindfulness exercise, and I tell them, uh, let's shut your eyes for five minutes and first concentrate on your body and senses. Uh, how you are in your body, how you uh, experience the connection with the ground and with the chair. How is your breathing? Uh, do you have some uh, sensual experiences? Do you do you have some taste in your mouth? Do you do you smell some uh, some fragrance? Uh, do you hear some sounds? And people just concentrate. Concentrate on here and now very easily, but then concentrate on what are what are what am I experiencing in my body and what am I experiencing in my uh, in my senses. Then I tell them, okay, let's now look at the thoughts and images in your mind. Able to realize what you are thinking right now, what thoughts are coming and how they are leaving, and a new thought comes, maybe some image, some picture. Some imagination is coming, but try to be in the position of an observer. Observe what is coming and let it go. And I, I, asked, I asked them, fine. Now uh, concentrate on your feelings. How are you feeling in your emotions? Is there fear? Is there real gladness? Is there joy? Is there anxiety? People start to feel how they feel. And maybe... Uh, sometimes we can go even to the unconscious area of this collective unconscious, as I thought about it concerning Carl Gustav Jung, and the person may feel some intuition is coming, maybe some picture, maybe some wise idea is coming, maybe some invention, maybe some aha effect. So everything from the subconscious area uh, can also be, uh, um, we can also find that some information from this area. Uh, so this is very simple exercise for five minutes. People can learn uh, how to be more in the present moment, how to concentrate on here and now, how to be mindful, how to be aware of what is happening. And what is very interesting is that is the discussion we have with clients after this exercise because uh, they realize that if they concentrate on body, they can change, they can before that, they were not even aware that uh, the sitting in the chair at work is not um, convenient for them, that something is happening, they are not feeling well uh, sitting on the chair. And when they concentrate on it, they can adapt, adopt, adapt to the position of the body, they can make some small physical exercises, 
and feel better. The same with mind. We can we can see what ideas are coming in my mind, and uh, we do not need do not need to be slaves of our thoughts. We can have dialogue with them. We can say we can we can feel we can um, we can realize that uh, the repeated thought is you need to do this. You have got a lot of tasks. You need to work hard, and. And we are not feeling good. And so we can talk, we can start in a dialogue with these automatic thoughts. We can be masters of our thoughts. We can have, we can say, yes, I can hear you. I know that I have a lot of work to do. Now I am uh, concentrating on myself. Please be back here. I will come to back to you in the afternoon. I will do the work. Don't be afraid. But now it's time for Alexa. And by this inner dialogue, we can change the way we are thinking. And it is the most powerful tool for a personal growth, for self-coaching. We are not slaves of our thoughts, but we can observe them, see whether the thought is good for us or some, somehow disturbing. And we can uh, send another thought, which might be, will be stronger than the original one, and we will change our way of thinking. And so this is extremely powerful tool. Uh, and then we can check on the level of feelings and emotions, whether the new idea, the new thought is stronger than the original one, and whether the original one is away, and whether I can have a new attitude and new approach. And if I feel in my emotions that the anxiety and fear is still there, I need to go back on the level of feeling of thoughts and work more on finding the better sentence, the, maybe the healing sentence. And so this is something what we are doing a lot with our clients, uh, just uh, concentrating on the way they are thinking, on the words they are saying to themselves and trying to find better approaches to themselves, better feeling, better thinking. And we check on the level of feelings, whether uh, the new one is better, whether it is enough. So this is one of the mindfulness exercises and also, uh, also its application to changing our uh, thought patterns. Uh, drama therapy, Gestalt theater, improvisation, role plays, uh, I talked already about this uh, role play of asking the, my boss to increase my salary so we can train different ways, uh, ways of our behavior, different ways of communication, and we can take it playfully, like uh, like uh, a sort a form of drama therapy or uh, improvisation so I can playfully try different approaches and see which one is better for me, not to behave always the same as I behave always, but trying new approaches, new ways of. Um, and I, uh, we in our coaching trainings, uh, we started to implement always some improvisation exercises that people uh, should, uh, and there is a lot of small games uh, we play, and though are, they are playful, they do not have anything in common with the coaching or mentoring themes of these clients, of these people, but they, they are funny and they learn how to uh, behave spontaneously. They learn how to respond to different situations in a new ways. And uh, so it is uh, something what we are also uh, including in coaching training so that people are able to improvise, to make improvisation. Uh, so uh, uh, we are a bit uh, a bit over the time, I can see. I'm, I was so enthusiastic about the theme that I, uh, that it's, uh, we should be, uh, we should be finishing uh, soon, uh, don't we? Or do we have uh, a few more minutes? Think, uh, maybe, maybe we can work through the rest of the message a bit quicker. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I will but, do it. Uh, 
but your presentation, oh, it, it's so great. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can say that because the audience, you know, actually most of the audience are not mentors and coaches. Yeah, They're yeah, just, but uh, this can yeah. be used in normal life. Yeah, for ourselves. They, they found it very useful, very interesting, actually. Yeah, there are so yes. many. They found that there are so many small things that has ignored in life. Actually, actually, these small details can help them actually make a big change. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you are right. Uh, we do not, uh, all these uh, methods and tools can be used for ourselves. We don't need to be coaches. We don't need to be mentors. Uh, of course, it is always better to have somebody I can uh, do it together than only by myself, but we can use it also in our, with our friends, with our families. Okay. So another most powerful tool is uh, metaphors. Very often we use some metaphors. I need to stand strong on my, on my legs. And when such a metaphor we use, the metaphors are very powerful, energetic uh, things. They can energize our um, us. And so if we use some uh, metaphor, we can think about uh, the creative ways of solving, of solving our problem. Uh, for example, I need to stand strong on my legs. So I stand strong and I need to feel support. Okay, so I will uh, lay, uh, lean on the wall and feel support. You know, uh, I am in the um, mystery, in the in the circle and not uh, able to find, not able finding the way out. Okay, so I can walk in the circle and then make a step out. And also, all these metaphors can be used for uh, to demonstrate them physically or mentally, and try to to search for the power of metaphors uh, for changing our approach. Uh, sometimes people come with dreams, and we think, and we look at the dreams that we had during the night, and we can see the pictures, symbols, feelings which were there in the dreams, and we can we can ask ourselves. What does this dream want to tell me? Uh, what can it mean? Uh, it is probably the voice of my subconscious psyche. And maybe if I have a dream about flying, it might uh, want to tell me that I need more freedom and in my life, more overview um, and so on. So it's also interesting, of course, there is a lot of dreams that do not have specific meaning, but there are some dreams, if especially if they repeat, which uh, say something about the inner status of our psyche. And it's nice to, to concentrate on them, look at them, try to understand what they could mean, try to find out what they could tell us. Uh, Jungian psychologists tell, that, tell us that the dreams are a great way to our subconscious and they have a lot of wisdom uh, included in them for uh, they can lead us through our life. Sometimes we do vision quests with clients that we try to help them to find vision for their life. Uh, we do it in the tradition of the American Indians. Sometimes that uh, that we, we really ask them, go for a whole night to the forest, spend the whole night there and wait for the vision to come. Wait for the uh, for some dream, wait for some revelation wait for some inner dialogue and maybe you will come back uh, in the morning from the from the forest and you will have some uh, in, inside some new vision and so on uh here is number 20 uh, it is uh, exchanging super ego claims by uh, healing words it's uh, one combination of, it's one example of these healing these healing words uh, for example, we when we observe our thoughts, we very often say to ourselves, "I must, I should, I mustn't, I shouldn't, I must, uh, I must uh, exercise more, I should not uh, mm -hmm. drink so much, I should not uh, eat uh, unhealthy food, and so on." But these self uh, demands are not uh, helping us very much. So we try to exchange them for, we, instead of, I must do physical exercises, we change these uh, uh, verbs. Or, for example, I can if I wish, 
or whenever I decide, I am able to have an exercise. And we experiment with changing these words which are not supporting and motivating uh, to another one. And it is also very powerful. And it's one way of repro reprogramming our mind. Interactions is the method where we make video of our interaction with other people or our presentation or our management meeting. And then we look at it and we can learn from what we see. It's very powerful because we can mention a lot of things we are doing bad or a lot of things we are doing good. And by seeing ourselves, our behavior, we can learn and develop a lot. Uh, VACOG is a method where we, for example, when we imagine the future, uh, how we want some situation to be changed, we can make inner visualization and we can uh, look what we see, what we hear, what uh, our bodily feeling is, what we touch uh, and what we smell and what we taste the situation. And it increases the, um, the our uh, ability to uh, imagine maybe some desired state or some good situation. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we are almost finishing, uh, we are almost finishing, so uh, retelling the life story from a different angle, one of the narrative methods is the, is the externalization I was, I was talking about. So for example, you, have, you are talking the story about your own life, that you had very difficult childhood and that's why you are not a happy person in adulthood. And you can retell the story that you had a difficult uh, childhood, but it made you strong enough so that you can be strong in life. Right now. By just looking differently from different angle at my own life and my own stories, I'm talking to myself, I can change my experience. Eric Milton Erickson was those great American psychotherapist and he used paradoxical interventions. Sometimes he ask the client to, if he wanted to be more relaxed, he asked him to be more stressed. And by telling him to do different or the opposite, he then could relax. And so he used a lot of great creative, uh, creative methods. And we would, uh, uh, several days would not be enough to see at the, the, all the different ways we can use Milton Erickson approach. So I will go uh, deep into it. Uh, sometimes clients can do something like an art therapy, draw the picture. Sometimes they even uh, find out that uh, in some altered states of consciousness, they are able to come to a better idea than in the normal state. So they are breathing, they are making written sounds, imagination, maybe some dance. And in that uh, different states of consciousness, slightly altered, they can come uh, to better ideas. Something similar is during the dance, there is five written dance. Some of the clients go and they uh, spontaneously show, express their feelings. Dynamic meditation of Ocho are experiences of these uh, ways of uh, <laughs> experimenting with movements. And the last method is six logical levels of Robert Bills. It's a wonderful method. Uh, I do not have time right now to go deeper into it, uh, but you can look at it at, uh, in the internet because you uh, ask the client in which environment, uh, or you think about yourself, in which environment you have some problem, how do you behave, what skills and capabilities you have, you have the problem, values and beliefs you have, and what is your identity when you have the, the problem? And you go up the pyramid. And then uh, you remember some transpersonal or spiritual experience, maybe some deep moments in your life when you, for example, was watching the stars and you were amazed how beautiful this uh, universe is. And you had this, uh, this strong ex experience. And so you imagine, you re recall this experience once, second time, third time, and then you and you take resources from this inner resources, and then you go down to the, through the pyramid, and when you when you reminded yourself this peak experience, what is your identity now? And it is different than before. 
what is what are your values and beliefs now what are your new skills what are your new behaviors and how you will behave newly in that original environment so you go down, back down through from the pyramid in a new identity and this pyramid we do as the steps in space in the room or in the countryside where we really make one step and we go with the problem up to the pyramid and without the problem with new power, new strength, new resources when you are going down back. So uh, let's, uh, if you are interested in this method, it is very powerful, very strong. You can look at it in more detail. Thank you okay, very much. Can you give an example of this one? Yeah, for example, I am, I am, uh, I don't like the, uh, um, I, I am not good in telephoning uh, to the clients. Our environment is my my office. Behavior, I do not take the telephone. I do not call. If I call, I am very and anxious. Okay, what are, what are your skills in this moment? My skill is that I am not able to talk. It's uh, my capability is to be afraid. And I am, do not like at all uh, talking to the customers, calling them. Okay, what is your belief in that moment? My belief is that uh, the customer don't doesn't want to be disturbed, and I am not good in uh, in telephone and uh, telephoning the clients. What is your identity? My identity is I am a loser and bad uh, salesperson. Okay, so and now. Uh, Go um, remind yourself three peak moments in your life when you really were was connected with your inner resources, where you felt powerful. And he uh, imagines three such situations, and uh, then uh, and he feels that he experiences that. And after these peak moments, he takes all these resources, all these strengths from these peak experiences, and he goes back. Uh, and what is your new identity? You, when you are connected with your resources. I feel like a king. Great. What are your beliefs? I believe I can do anything. What is your new skill when you are connected with these resources? You have your new identity of the king and you have this belief that you can do anything, that you are, that you make a difference, that you are able to make the difference. My new skill is I am able to communicate with people and I am able to take a phone and I'm able to call and not, not feeling afraid, but I will feel self-assured. Okay, what will be your behavior? I will take the phone and I will, uh, re I will rejoice that I can talk to the customer and I will feel good. Okay, what will be the environment in which it will happen? Oh, it will not be in the office. I will go to walk in the forest and I will call the customer from there. Okay, great. You change your behavior pattern by this method. Okay, thank you. thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for yeah. inviting me, and I hope you will use some of these tools for yourself and maybe some bus also for somebody else. Thank you, thank you, Milan. And here's another question Can you explain mm -hmm. more about the 22nd one, the Vakok? Uh, yes, it is basically the method of um, imagination. So, for example, imagine yourself uh, in the desired state that you want to, I don't know, to be more, more self-assured when you will have your next presentation at work. And you will, and all these sensual feelings, you will you um, amplify, you make them stronger. So for example, what do you see when you imagine yourself present? I see myself in the, in the room, I see myself uh, standing there, I'm smiling. Okay, what do you hear? I hear the applause of the audience. Okay, what is what is your bodily posture? I'm standing strong there, and I hold the table. What do you what do you touch? I touch the table. What is your taste, or what is your uh, what is your smell? Oh, I smell the good fragrance, and I I have uh, the the taste of uh, coffee in my mouth. Okay, if you imagine this, uh, make it more more uh, bright, make it more colorful. Imagine the situation 
so that whenever you will have your real presentation, whenever you will have your real presentation, make it, uh, uh, you will remember this imagination and you will uh, just be able to present in the PowerPoint. And so the same method can be used if I have some bad memory, some bad situation, I can imagine it and I can diminish it. I can darken it like you darken the, uh, for example, the computer display. So the bad situation I can diminish, I can uh, go far away from it and make the display dark or I can uh, I can uh, uh, strengthen the positive situation or the positive situation. So that's basically it. Also, you can find it in the internet, Vakovic's uh, famous method from neural linguistic programming. Thank you. Thank so you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, I say, for this opportunity. And thank I have you, thank here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have here my students of coaching so i need to go oh, to yeah. see them and to supervise them so that they learn how to be good coaches so i need to finish now thank you very much thank you thank you thank you for your fantastic presentation after the webinar i'll email you about the feedback from the audience thank you yeah. thank you very much great and if possible if you will have some recording uh, it would be great yeah yeah i will send it to you yeah Thank you very much, I see. Have a good thank time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day. Bye bye. Bye. How now, Gantan is woman, Milan Bobek, Jolian, Gantan, Fish Hong, Jing Tai, Yen Jiang. Now, Ta. 应该用实际的例子给我们介绍了这个二十九个就可以让我们二十九个非常高效的这个创意体验式这个教练方法那同时呢就是不止教练不止导师包括我们生活中我们所有的人都可以运用这些方法就特别在我们面临各种可能负面